Well, good day to everyone. Um, this is part two, or my second video, about cutting an internal gear on a watchmaker's lathe. Uh, just as an introduction, if you haven't seen my first video on this, I would encourage you to go and look at that first. I'm going to provide a link in the description down below that you can go back and and look at that. In that video, I give a basic um, overview of the attachment, the lathe attachment that I made uh, to do this specific task. I hope to expand on that in this video, but I thought it might be good or best if you saw that video first. For those that are here just to see the end product, as you can see, I've started off with pictures of my most recent and most successful gear. I recognize that there are some people that probably won't watch the whole video, so I thought I'd start off with just the end. What I'd like to uh, accomplish in this video and expand on is uh, the journey that I've taken to get a more satisfactory internal gear using my my little setup. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the making of the fly cutter uh, and the, the journey that I've had to take getting a good fly cutter that works and uh, talk a little bit about the setup of how I mount the the brass disc that will become the gear. Then we'll watch some video clips of my various attempts at cutting this gear. Now here are a couple pictures of the first cutter that I made and used, the one I used in my first video. This cutter was made essentially with needle files and oil stone. There is a, a strength to this cutter and there is a significant weakness to this cutter. The strength and the benefit of this cutter is that when you look from the side at the profile of the cutter, you notice that that center point um, or the tip is very strong because it is backed by more steel, more metal uh, in the formation of the cutter. And so it's, it's actually a very robust and very strong cutter. The downside to this cutter, of course, is that you're shaping the profile by hand and you cannot ensure that each side of that tip is spaced perfectly and the profile is perfect in that as you saw in my first video to to ensure that the profile of the tooth that you cut is even now the second and uh, subsequent cutters that i used i made on a lathe and as you look at pictures of this type of cutter you have the benefit, of course, of ensuring as you as you turn it on a lathe that each side of that tip is going to be shaped the same way that the other side of the tip is. But then you have the downside of once you grind off uh, half of it to make it into a cutter, you the tip is actually very weak. And I was concerned that this would bend over or break in use, even though it is a piece of steel and it's cutting brass, a much softer metal. And as it turned out, one of my attempts, it did break off. I, I made that center point uh, too thin. So I went ahead and made another cutter 
where the tip of the cutter was shorter and here's a picture of the the gear that resulted and while it likely would have worked i was afraid that the the channel between each tooth was not deep enough and potentially might cause the gearing to bind I wasn't real pleased with how this looked so I made another cutter uh, I also made a cutter that cut the the slot between the teeth too wide and then you had very narrow teeth I, I didn't like the the look of it and so I continued to try and adjust um, what would ultimately be the, the, the diameter of that tip uh, as I worked it on the lathe and eventually came up with a cutter that did wor work and gave me a, a tooth profile that looked right and uh, the spacing between the teeth that was right. So... It took me several tries. It, I thought, I thought originally that I had measured correctly the the original and the first cutter, um, and tried to base it off of that. But evidently, I didn't, and it took me a couple of tries uh, to get a gear that looked appropriate. Now. In the setup that I use for for cutting the internal gear, I start with a, a solid collet blank, and I attach to it uh, a, a rather thick piece of brass. Uh, a couple important features to this is uh, the internal cavity, the center cavity. This um, this is cut to a specific diameter and, a, and a, a depth, first of all, the depth deep enough that the, um, that the little spindle holding the fly cutter can enter all the way into the cavity without cutting the back of the cavity. The inside diameter of the cavity should be large enough to support the brass piece that we're going to cut the gear out of, um, but not so small to perfectly match the inside diameter of the gear. This will create a situation where the fly cutter has to cut not just through the brass that we're making the gear out of, but it will also have to cut through this brass backing or the support. And we don't want to create any more work for the fly cutter than we have to. Now, another thing that you'll note uh, as you watch this is there really isn't a whole lot of, of power or, or really torque to that little spindle that is holding the fly cutter. And as a result, um, the feed needs to be either very light or very slow. I'm feeding the cutter fairly slow. But even going slow, you'll note that the, the cutter will hang up and stop every now and then. I just back it out and refeed it, uh, refeed it uh, through uh, slowly. And I had to do this several times. Not not nearly every tooth, but it happened frequently. Um,
I wanted to, in my demonstration of, of this, to show you maybe several different perspectives of my tool working and um, so you get a better idea of how it functions. In this view right here, uh, you can see the, the action of the pulleys and the, the rubber O-rings. I mounted this, as I said in, in my first video, on a, a little attachment that I purchased at a show some time ago. In retrospect, it wouldn't be difficult to use the the, the base or the, the the body of a milling attachment, a normal milling attachment for for gear cutting on a lathe, and make something that would mount on that, and that would give you the height adjustment which we want. But since I had this, I used this. Just a couple thoughts on gear cutting in general, not specific to this form of gear cutting. But time should be spent to check and ensure that the travel of the, the cutter runs perfectly parallel to the line of centers of the headstock that the, the gear will be mounted. If your cross slide, as you're feeding the cutter into the, the gear, if it isn't running perfectly parallel to that line of centers, this will be another thing that could possibly throw um, the tooth off-center and make the tooth look uh, diagonal as opposed to straight. Um, that's the case with all forms of gear cutting including uh, internal gear cutting. Another tip or consideration that applies to all gear cutting that I learned from an old timer who's now passed away is that when you cut a gear take a like a black marker and m mark up the very edge of the rim that you will be cutting the teeth into so after you have completed uh, your all your passes and cut all the teeth and you do uh, an inspection of the gear before you take it out of the lathe you can just look at the end of each tooth and if you see color you know that you need to make another pass and cut each tooth a little bit deeper um, but if you see that the end of each tooth is pointed as it should be then you know that you've engaged the cutter deep enough. So here we are, uh, alas, a uh, uh, reasonable and workable gear, and um, I'm satisfied with this, and I hope this video was helpful and informative to you, and uh, I appreciate each one of you taking the time and watching. Be well.